Oosh. All right, we're on. Uh, finally, we've got uh, John Wayne Parr on today. It's been a long time. We've been trying to get this all set up. Thank you for waiting for us. We're here at Gasoline Alley. Uh, thanks for having us. Staying open. They closed at 4 p.m. Fob time. We're here uh, <laughs> two time, hours later. Right. Islander time. Yeah, um, <laughs> big <we're> time. <laughs> um, yeah. John, we're very happy to have you on here. I've uh, I actually met you when I was a kid. We were just talking to me, uh, before you fought on uh, King of the Cage, Dad's show. Um, yeah, it's been a long time. Actually, on that, let's uh, hear about that uh, MMA story. How yeah, did that come okay. about? Okay, so um, out of the blue, uh, I, I've known Tony Bonello back in the day. He was a bit of a star. He was uh, just he was always in the magazines as the guy to try and beat. He had the the unbeatable style that if you're fighting three guys in the pub, you could easily take him out if you follow his curriculum. Um, and then I think he was six, I think he was sixteen and zero at this stage. And uh, he gave me a call saying, "Hey, um, just want to know, would you, would you like to fight me by any chance?" It's like, "Oh no, no, you're like a, you're like a hundred kilos. I'm eighty kilos. I fight at seventy kilos. You're you're a hundred kilos. And plus, I've never done MMA my whole life." He goes, oh, what about if I give you $30,000? I thought, ooh, you've got my attention now. This is there. Yeah, Money um, talks, huh? But 30, you're still a 100 kilos. Oh, let's make it 35000 Oh, done, done. Where do I sign? So um, I had two months to prepare. Uh, I, I, I think I jumped on the plane like a couple of days later. I went to America, tried to learn as much ground as I could. Um, escapes. Um, tried to learn how to sprawl. I uh, had to start from pretty much basic or what a rear naked had the baby steps of one, two, behind, um, trying to pull a hand down, trying just just your basic MMA. Um, Within two months, two yeah, months is... Yeah, yeah, impossible. Uh, and then I think when I got back to Australia, a couple of days before Australia, I said, oh, I gave him a call saying, hey, man, I'm just wondering, is there any chance you could be under 100? Because uh, you're pretty big. And he goes, oh, no, you said yes. Um, it's an open weight. Um, it's too late. It's too late. You've agreed to it, so it's over. Those ones. So, oh fuck, I'm gonna die. <laughs> and then, um, so I got to the venue, got to the Penrith Panthers. Everything was set up, cage for the first time. It's pretty nerve wracking. Uh, and then I think I asked um, your dad. I said, oh, um, so, so where's Tony? I just like, go and say good day. Be a good, good sportsman. I was, oh no, he doesn't come to the room until about ten minutes before the fight. He doesn't like being in the arena. He doesn't like the nerves. He gets his hands wrapped in his in his bedroom. So, oh, that's strange. All right, sure. So they've called me in first. I got into the cage, and then um, Tony's come in second. And then it's probably the, the for a big guy, he just looks so nervous. He's looking at the ground the whole time. The referee brought us together. And then um, I'm looking at him, and he, he wouldn't look at me at all. I'm thinking, oh, fuck, I think, I think you're sort of a bit scared. And the whole idea, because he's so big, the plan was to move and stick and move. And, but once I seen he was a little bit nervous, I thought, oh, nah. Stuff it. I'm going for it. I'm going to try and knock you out. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what I got to lose. So the the bell's gone for the first. I've sort of gone forward, and then as soon as Tony's got a chance, he just run me straight against the cage. We pummeled for a little bit. Um, he ended up taking me down, and then um, yeah, I, I tried hold on. So I couldn't ground and pound me. I, I hold on nice and tight, and I tried to hip escape, and he just grabbed me from behind. And then, um, yeah, I think the fight lasted like 45 seconds. It wasn't a very long fight at all. Was it rear naked? Uh, rear naked, yep. yeah. I actually talked to your dad but prior to the fight. I said, oh, could you be the referee, please? Because I, I heard um, Tony's got a bit of a reputation of holding on for a little... He likes everyone to go to Tony's sleep. Tony's become a bit of a star on the old half cost podcast. This is the second time he's, yeah. got a big, he's had the call out. Mark, <laughs> Mark gave him the call out. Yeah. I was going to add on to that. I'll let you finish this story and I was going to just yeah, say so, what um, so you luckily, your dad, as soon as, as soon as I tapped, your dad was all over. He got him off me straight away. And then, um, yeah, so... I said, oh, okay, so money. Let's get this money now. Let's, let's do it. And he said, oh, well, un unfortunately, I don't get paid till after the venue clears all the cash. He said, I'll, I'll just wire it to you in a, in a couple of days. Yeah, that sounds fair enough. That sounds good. And then, um, yeah, there was, there was no money. So those so, ones. Yeah, so <laughs> you, you know, so fighting fighting the Tony is a bit crazy. But uh, I had a chat to to um, Tyson's dad, and Tyson's dad, being the legend that he is, he said, nah, "Mate, you took one for the team. Um, it's only fair that I pay." You. And 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 to his word, he gave me every cent too. So. And uh, massive respect to, to Pedro too. He's uh, nothing. I've never forgotten that day. He's, he's a legend for what he did. Oh, I'm happy because I thought that was going to go a different way too. <laughs> 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 so, uh, uh, and, but um, like with with that, like uh, Tony got a run on the last episode with Mark as well, and um, like 
it's crazy because when I was a kid, like I was a 12 year old kid, I was doing the work in the cage door and stuff like that. So like seeing Tony in there, uh, just going demolishing fighters and um, I didn't know all the backstories or anything. I just saw this pure martial artist. I would go to his house and he would have like all these books on like um, the art of war and stuff like that. And I just, I was seeing this guy that I like, I sort of looked at as like the complete martial artist beating everyone. Um, and uh, even now, like we go to Vegas and seen him a couple of times and he's always been a gentleman to us. So. Uh, like yeah it's like this is what we're saying it's hard hearing the stories because like you, you don't want to um hear that about them because at, at that stage mma was still coming up and then he said to me he said i can bring all these big names out but the australian public don't know who they are so he said but with yourself if i fight you everyone knows who john wayne Parry is so if we fight we can guarantee a sellout which which made sense which which way offered me so much money because he knew he was going to like get a big group show what did you think of the pen of panthers that club? was okay i fought there a couple of times yeah. shout so, out to pen yeah. <laughs> which is uh, crazy cuz well arguably the best muay thai fighter in australia like a history least, yeah, for sure in, uh, for sure but, and still like it's crazy with that sport that you can go in some place in Australia and some people won't know, like all fighters know who you are. But like it's crazy because now we're still dealing with the same thing with MMA. Like MMA is still not big in Australia, like considering an international basis. Um, when I went to the States, I didn't realize how big it is. Like, yep. And that's just sport in general. So um, yeah, it's like, I, that's what I think we're trying to do at the moment, trying to build up MMA because like people like you, like you're fighting all of these fights for 131 fights, I think you said, yeah, yep. and the best in the world. You never took, were taking an easy fight or trying to take an easy road. So, yeah. um, like following your what you've done in history for uh, fighting, even jumping in the MMA cage, it's yeah. like good to look up to you as someone, oh, someone like that with fighting. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, Stop it. Um, Stop it. But I am gonna have to put you on the spot with this, my man, uh, Joe Schilling. Yep. <laughs> Uh, he, he he said he was the same. He said he looks up to you. I, I'm, I've met him a couple of times in the states, and he goes, "Yeah, John Wayne's not a fan of me." So oh, I was like, "Oh man, that sucks." Because like, like, Tyson's yeah, just gene and up. He's just like, trying to hype it. I was up. like, "What like, happened? <laughs> mix it up, then." What yeah, happened? Tell him. What happened? To. No, that, don't yeah. do you, do you get to fight? Uh, we fought on you the same it? show in December. On December nine, we both fought in Italy together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was but cool. but was, oh, it, was, that, was that on the? You didn't fight together, did you? Uh, not against his other, no. but we're yeah. on the same card. He's he's like two or three weeks bigger than me. He's oh, a, so he's, he's bigger he's than a big guy. Is he? Yeah, he's massive. I think oh, he no, fights no. at yeah. uh, one eighty five. I yeah, middle I only know local New South Wales fighters. Yeah, but just um. But not a fan of his style, or oh, no, he's right. Yeah. He, he's he's killing it over there. He's yeah. got some massive sponsors. He's he's winning. Mm. Um, he's a he's a big draw card. Yeah. Um, like, but but like that's why I never. I was like, he's one of the sickest motherfuckers I've met. Like, yeah. and he's he's a cool dude, and that's why I was like surprised. I was like, if you guys didn't get along because you seem like similar in personality wise. But yeah. so how many fights is there left on? Uh Old uh, Bellator. Uh, I've had two for him so far. I've got one to go, and then if all goes according to plan, I'd love to get an extension. Maybe three or four or five more fights for him would be good. Get this uh, 100th win, hey? Yeah, yeah. so I'm 41 years old. But at the same time, I still feel like mid twenties. I still feel like I got a lot in me. This um, I love my training. I love my fighting. And unlike you yeah, guys, yeah, I actually yeah. like training. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't look at me. Don't look at it. It we love training too. <laughs> love it. So yeah, the, in the in the mornings, there's no better feeling than waking up and and doing my 12k runs and um, hanging out with the boys and doing. I feel amazing after a good pad session. Um, sparring day is crazy. I love sparring. Uh, and then the fights are bonus. So, yeah, mm, just, I, yeah. I, I love my lifestyle. I, I love being fit and, and getting do, out there. How do you think your body's handled it? Like, you're like uh, getting on like with what you're 41 now, and yeah. I'm like, I'm young, yep. well, age wise, and I feel like I'm getting all these niggling injuries all the time. Like, you see everyone getting injured, yeah. and you're still out there just rocking it. It's a bit different. I think the jiu jitsu, I think a lot of guys, they pull a bit too hard and they do this and that, but because we're constantly striking as well, um, mm. we probably spar maybe 30, 40% at most. And then mm. we save majority of our the hard stuff for in the ring. Yep. Um, when, when I box, I box a bit harder. I box about ninety percent, but we've got the big gloves on too. So. Yeah. Uh, he punched my I, head I in the other day. Oh, just yeah. Quietly, yeah. <laughs> just it was like <laughs> he hit like, <laughs> the whole body <laughs> behind it, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> it was just not stop like a little a rabbit. I, I, I was think, watching um, being in Thailand for so long too. You you look you want to keep that longevity as well. You don't want to. If, if we're sparring, we don't want to go too hard because if I spar too hard today, then I can't train tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. And then um, on the ring, once you know that you're sort of winning, you back off a little bit, or, unless you want to finish them, of course. But 
yeah, uh, you the Thais have 200, 300 fights, and then they're not punch drunk. They're all got their senses with them as well. So, well, that was my next question. Uh, with they're talking about brain damage all the time yeah. and stuff like that. But you see it more in boxing than yeah. many yeah. of the other. Um, I think with our sports, combat. we cop a lot of leg kicks, we cop a yeah, lot of body yeah, kicks. Yeah, yeah. Um, you get the odd cut from the elbow here and there, but yeah. uh, for brain damage, I think I, I cop more head punches when I was purely boxing. Yeah. Had 13 pro boxing fights. And my last boxing fight was against um, Sakia Bika from Sydney. Wow. And um, oh. I did a 12-round 12 12 fight for him for the Aussie title. And that was the first time after the fight that um, I couldn't comprehend English for about two hours. Yeah, yeah. My brain was so what? mashed. Boxes are box Even when because they spar boxes. Yeah, on that, he's a beast as well. He's a beast, so, yeah. yeah. I think two or three fights after we fought, he went in the, he won the WBC world title too. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No one he, wanted to fight him. Done. They yeah. said Didn't they can't get him a match. Yeah. Was that, that uh, was walking. We were walking. He was walking home. Yeah, I think. Yeah, the fanboys were like, oh, that's fucking big. There he is. I, I watched, um, is it, yeah, B uh, Bukow? Bukow oh, fight okay, yeah. um, uh, last night. That was sick. Uh, yeah. Like, um, I was just trying to, like, look at some footage of a little talk. But uh, technical, uh, like, um, technically, that was just a crazy fight. You can see how much you guys are watching and snapping. It was just, that was fun to watch. But then you flip that, and uh, I think one of your most viewed fights was... Um, Zambitas, yeah, Zambitas, the little Greek guy. And then the complete opposite, you're just there, just mauling him, going like, so, it's yeah, uh, I fought, I fought Borkow twice, once in Japan, once in Jamaica, and both, uh, probably the, one of the Westerners that pushed him as much as I possibly could. Yeah, um, yeah. The, the first fight in Japan was three rounds, was a draw, we fought an extension round, and even that was a split decision with one judge for me, two judges for him. And then in Jamaica, um, there were, there was three Thai judges and after the fight, they gave him the points. But then uh, one of those ones where the next day just inundated by the social media and um, yeah, the yeah. forums and stuff, everyone's going, mate, there's no way. No one, you lost it. Because um, I, I was boxing more, hitting more with hands, yeah. and he was yeah. doing the kicks. So probably Thai style, he's won. But for the Westerners, they see the hands working. Yeah, so, yeah. So, the, yeah cat caught so that I, I, straight right. Even though I lost, I'm happy that I gave him a hard fight and got the respect from the fans, knowing that um, I, I pushed him to his limits. Mm. So, and it, like spending so much time in Thailand... Like how how did you earn that much respect? Like just because were you? Because like I go to Thailand a lot now, and yep. it is just full of Westerners. Yep. Was it back in your day when like you know OG days when you yeah, started? Yeah. Was it was it just you or was it what? Yeah, when where I lived in Bangkok, um, I was the only Westerner. Yeah. So yeah. not only did I I was I was living like a Thai, so I slept on the on, on a wooden floor and no hot water. I was one of those ones where you That's had to respect. lather lather That's up, respect, use the soap, yeah. lather off again. Uh, eat on the floor with the boys, sit in a circle, we'd all get a plate of rice and the, the, the meals would be in the middle, so you go a spoonful at a time. And then um, and then anything outside of the camp, was I'd be the only Westerner too, so I yeah. had to learn the Thai language really fast. And then just um, uh, my Thai trainer said, I don't want to just teach you Muay Thai, I want to teach you how to be a Thai. So learning the respect for the olders and letting, letting the olders speak first and just just, uh, just, just being... Yeah. Um, and I think when I brought, come back to Australia, everyone goes, oh, why are you so humble? I think because you, you know there's 50 killers out there and your weight division, you learn to be very respectful yeah, because yeah, you don't want to yeah, get beat up sure. by the next guy you're fighting. Just because I, I was just going in the gym and I was just going through all the old photos you got on the wall and that, and I was just like, wow, yeah, he is an OG for good, real. Good like, memory. That's, that's it, was, it was good times. Um, I think because win, lose, or draw, as long as you fight as hard as you can and give them the, the you don't give up. So yeah, many, yeah. so many Westerns I see, they get a, a tiny little cut and yeah, they give up on their stool. Oh, I'm done, I'm done. But if you stand there and have a war and you're cutting both eyes and you're bleeding, but you're still punching onto that final bell, yeah. um, the ties you get off the they get off the ring and ties will still come up and give you that bit of respect. That respect, yeah. But um, I think the worst thing you can do is give up halfway through the fight and, and not fight. So it's oh, all about sure. a warrior. If yeah. you're a warrior, they'll respect you. Real like, fighters wouldn't do that. I don't think. Yeah, so. that's yeah. it. That's it. Your ties wouldn't do it, so they wouldn't expect you to do it either. Exactly. So, I like yeah, that. It, um, yeah, Thailand was amazing. The, it's like playing uh, rugby league over here. If you, yeah. you if you want to excel, you have to go to their country. And um, I was very lucky to have a approximately 50 fights over there, and um, uh, all from the movie Kickboxer. So Van Dam, watching Van Dam going and doing his thing. So the, the the idea was to try and make the stadiums, and I got the fight in the stadiums, and I got the fight in the big ones, and then eventually I ended up winning um, two world titles in Bangkok against really famous Thais. So the first time they have a, the king's birthday is in front of a yeah. crowd of a hundred thousand people. the biggest fight you've ever fought on? Yeah, I, I've done that four times. Four times. So every year on the 5th of December, a hundred thousand people rock up to this park. And then uh, Kujur, it's all the, the Thais versus the Westerners. And then, so it'd be 12 versus 12. 
And then because uh, there's so much pressure on the tide, if they lose, they disrespect not only the country, but they disrespect the king losing on his birthday. Yep. So I fought this one tie, and I, I gave him a hiding five rounds, broke his arm, broke his nose, um, beat him on points. And then as he's walking back to the change room, all the ties are going, you piece of shit, you, you can't believe you lost. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's like, oh man, I feel sorry for him. Yeah. Not because he lost, but because of, um, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he lost the respect of his own people. Hey, well, that happens. That Jamie, happens. Jamie that happened to Jamie. Jamie. That Ooh. happened to James Tahuna, You know, oh, yeah. when he lost he, to Nate Marquardt. Yeah, that he was got a the headline a show, and, and they just totally. I think someone spat on him, didn't they? Oh, think, oh yeah, really? They, they spat, spat on him when he was walking out. back to the to the sheds and that. Oh, Couldn't believe Stray it. If you ever, ever do that, to spit me, on me. I'm dropping the crowd. game. I'm in the crowd. You better be ready. I'm telling you. So, but. Are you still running CMT, is it, Cage uh, Muay Thai? Yes, yes. Uh, we're just waiting for the next Bellator fight so I don't get too close. So I get that date first, then I'll, I'll book my next CMT. So yeah. being a massive UFC fan and not having any jiu-jitsu, it's like, oh, man, I want to fight in the cage so yeah. bad. Um, I just had uh, Cage Envy um, fighting <laughs> in a ring for so long. I wanted to, to see what it was like to fight in those little gloves. And yeah. uh, I thought I'll, I'll go and have a few MMA fights. I had, had the one with Tony, but it was, only, it was ridiculous yeah. fighting a gorilla, yeah. 20-something kilos bigger than me. If I, I want to fight in the cage, I want to do a problem with some of my weight. So I thought I'll learn jiu-jitsu. And then um, one of my very first classes, I snapped my finger completely in half. I'm laying in bed with a broken finger thinking, oh, I want to fight in the cage, but I don't want to do jiu-jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> How can I do it? And then I thought, oh, why don't I just do it Muay Thai rules? Oh, so, yeah. Sounds like Thai. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've so, got a belt now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how it all came about from the broken finger. So, and then, um, yeah, it's been really good so far. We've had 10 shows and it's growing every show. Everyone knows what we're doing now. The oh. first couple of shows, everyone's going, what the hell? Yep. We stand up in the cage with MMA gloves, no, yeah. no ground. How does that work? But now everyone knows what's going on. It's been on Fox Sports a few times. So. I, I used to train with one of the guys, uh, Elliot Compton. Shout oh, out Elliot, to Elliot. Yeah, 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 he's Elliot's a good cool. friend. He's a good, a good guy. Um, yeah, he, he's fought for the title on there he's, a couple yeah, of times, hasn't he? And then um, we had uh, 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 Louis Bedardo on there as well. Yep. So and uh, I trained actually with uh, Bedardo. He had the fight with the, is it just the bare knuckle one or the ropes? Oh, just yeah, recently? Just recently. Yep. Yeah, I didn't see it. How did it go? Do you know? Uh, he, jo- he got beat. Oh, did a good fight, though. It's a, man, I, they Shout told me. To the Bedardo yeah, they're, they're from the area. As well. He's got a big heart. Yep. But um, he, like, um, they told me it's like headbutts, groin shots. Yeah, that's. Yeah, uh, that's uh, uh, oh. I know that. Uh, what's that country? It's a, that's their, their sport. Oh, yeah, yeah. Burma? There's a guy yeah. from Bur- Burmese boxing. That's what yeah. they call it. Eh? How there's do you guy, train for like? Well, there's a guy. There's a guy that trains in uh, Thailand. I just fuck. I forgot his name. He's like the champ, and he's like on the bag. Yeah, they, <laughs> <laughs> they full do. He's like uh, they full do like full mad headbutts now. Uh, like, go do the big wall ten times. All right. Over there. Uh, I've been uh, training uh, Stuart McKinnon as well. Oh, yep. He said, um, he actually, he said to ask me, ask you a question, how's it feel to be the only grandpa on the circuit? Yeah, but he said, say, <laughs> <laughs> he said to say hi. He said to say hi. He's, uh, yeah. It's been awesome doing uh, doing that with him. I'd, I hadn't had no uh, like, uh, proper kickboxing or Muay Thai training yep. uh, until with him. It was always like karate sort of style. So He wouldn't be that much younger than me, surely. He'd be in his mid 30s. Like yeah, yeah, I think he was just having a go. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was just having, he's, like, he's been going yeah. for years. He's like, oh, I'm old. I'm old. And then you get in, it's like same thing, non stop. Bro, you're not that old, bro. <laughs> when, when did you start? 11? Was 11, it? yeah. 11. So, so Taekwondo at first, did that for about a year and a half. And then I uh, had one one or two tournaments in the Taekwondo style. Yeah. Uh, even the first, my first Taekwondo fight was an eight man tournament. So, yeah, three fights in one day, yep. old school. And then um, they, they, they couldn't afford their rent, so they moved out of the little hall. And then six months later, kickboxing moved in the very same little um, hall that they were at. So ever since then... That's how it fell apart. Yeah, fell into yeah, it. Just, just it was, happened to be close to home and mm. then it just had, fell in love with it. And yeah, 30-something years later, still here. So that's crazy. I think that's why I'm lucky as well because I was doing martial arts with Dad and doing all those, uh, um, like... Uh, tournaments yep. during the day, even jiu-jitsu tournaments, karate tournaments, all of those tournaments. So that I think that helped progress into when I was fighting. Yep. Like made a bit a big difference when you're walking out. Because I remember the first time I walked out with um, James into um, when he fought in Brisbane, and like just the 
sheer amount of people in the crowd like I wasn't even fighting and I was like just getting pumped and the shake so it was just I think it was lucky that I got to do that walkout first because I remember sweating like when I felt the hot lights when I got all the way to the cage and I was like lucky I wasn't Mm. fighting today (laughs) 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 but uh, that was um yeah, that was unfortunate as well. So uh, your missus is a fighter yes. as well, yeah? Yes, um, I moved oh, to Andy. America. Yeah. I got the opportunity to go and teach and fight out over there in 2002. Um, and then when I got to the gym, there was all these posters of these girls on the wall. And, um, oh, and I kept asking everyone, who's this girl? Oh, she's going to be here in a couple of days. She's, she's fighting in three weeks as well. And then uh, the first, cause she was living at the camp that I was living at as well. When she came back from wherever she was, she moved into the camp. So we'll Dang. work up every day. We train together. <laughs> we go and eat lunch together. Go and teach classes together. And then, yeah, a week later, we went on our first date uh, at the Bellagio. Did you give him the Van Damme? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so where I was going with that is, that, so you're a fighter, your missus is a fighter, and now, now your daughter is, yeah. is fighting. How, how, does, how, 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 how does that feel? Like, is, that, is that like... Like, is that, like, scary or is that, like, how, how do you, like... Because I, I, I know the feeling of, like, watching my boys fight and stuff like that, but I, I don't know about if, like, you know, yeah. how about, about watching your my, daughter. My when, mom. when it's go time, it's, um, you just turn off from the relationship and yeah, you just want, yeah, want yeah. them to do the best. So you just train a mode comes in and, all right, do this, do this, do this, do this. Yeah. And I know that she's got the skills to back it up too. She's got yeah, the, yeah. that Mexican heart. For sure, for so, sure, yeah. And then um, she prides herself on having a concrete head as well. She doesn't t- mind taking a couple to give a couple. <laughs> <laughs> But that, like, my mum's like a bit different. She's not a fighter. She's obviously the complete opposite. But she came to one of my amateur boxing fights, and uh, <laughs> man, I got like chinned, sat on the sat on my butt, and all I heard was this loud scream, and the whole crowd was just silent. Ooh. And I look over at my mum. I gave her the eyes, <laughs> and, I, and then I banned her from every fight after that. So she's never been to any one of my fights after, and she can't even watch it on TV. She has to go shopping just so, uh, just so she doesn't hear it, so she doesn't watch the replay. Yeah, she, so it's just, pretty much just you just cut it out. Just yeah, train yeah. And then, then um, just get she the was amazing up. before I met her, and then and then since being together, it's good too because I know if, if I have to go away for somewhere for a couple couple of days for seminars or overseas, the gym's going to be in good hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she's not going to rub the till, maybe, <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and if she does. I can't say nothing anyway because it's yeah, yeah no it's going to go to her so. anyway. So what's the, well, it doesn't matter if she rubs the till. Mm. Um, but the kids, yeah, they've been boarding up in it um, with, with no pressure whatsoever to, to follow in their martial arts. They can be a dancer or a, yep, a yep. gymnast. We've taken their little guy to gymnastics, and after a little while, he gets bored. We took the jazzy to um, dancing and a few different things, and she just said, I, I want to start training. And when she was eight, I want to I want to start fighting. So I want to start fighting. Uh, yeah, sure. And then, yeah, then she just loves it now. She goes to school. She's got the little trophy. The little, the little guy, he just won his first belt the other day as well. So, And then, oh, when's my next fight? It's like, oh, don't you want to go the whole family on the trampoline just or something? That's just animal. Animal. Yeah. Yeah. Animal. So, animal. And we've got one little three-year-old. She's she's coming up too. Already punching. She's she's shadow boxing. And, and the, yeah, it's <laughs> it's inedible there where she's going to go as well. So yeah, it's good. That's really cool. That's really cool. Sorry, the whole family. That's a, Yeah, that's mad. But, yeah. but your dad was a boxer wasn't he as well oh yeah no I was it, a boxing bag <laughs> <laughs> it's a like nah. a, it, just, it just shows Jokes. that like a docs can they come back can they come back now don't worry about it nah, yeah. if, that, if that's true my dad's watching as well <laughs> go on <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. right, like, um, are, are you hard on hard on your kids oh no with training um, I'm, I'm very lucky, uh, Jazzy, she's going to be 15 in two weeks. And she's so motivated. She has her clothes in her bag after school. She's got a little crew at the gym that they all meet up for and run together and spar together. Um, she'll tell the pad, oh, can I do one more round on the pads? Like, I don't have to tell her, come on, you got to work. She knows the work. She sees me, I guess, with my work ethic. She yeah. knows she has to work hard if she wants to achieve. She's so got it's, first-hand it's, it's, experience more, yeah, than, more than anyone plus, yeah, ever, she's ever had, could. Yeah, she's had 17 sure. fights now. Yep. She had a first fight. Fights? Yeah, she had a first Holy fight in uh, Birmingham in <laughs> England last year as well. Had a win. She won a belt, and then she's got three belts now. So 14 with three belts. She's like, damn. So yeah, I never had that when I was a kid. So. I don't really feel like a fighter now. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's more fights than me. <laughs> How does it work as an amateur? Her, like, uh, yeah, kids, she's still, is there just amateur still, rules uh, yeah, she's under still, a certain age? Yeah, still just um, in the juniors. Yeah. So, but, and then it's all learning too. So by the time she's old enough and turns 17, 18 and starts fighting adults, she'll be prepared and 
um, yeah, and used to the pressure as well. And uh, yeah, she told me as well. She goes, "It's so hard being a par because as soon as I walk out, oh, and the, the crowd almost stops and watch walk out. Okay, is she going to be like a dad, or is she going to be like yeah. mum? That's just yeah. I think you're just yeah. born like that, I suppose. Yeah, though. yeah. She, she can feel the pressure. Yeah, you, know, you know, got to eventually I mean? get out of that shadow, like um. Yeah, that, it was only at, like AFG and stuff like that where dad was always training there and mm. stuff like that and I was always following dad to the gym yeah. and then it's like slowly that time where you become your own man or your own like, okay, now that's Pedro's son. Like yep. I, that, I was always Pedro's son. Yep. Oh, now that's Tyson's dad. So oh, like that's where like, yeah. you sort of feel that shift. Oh, it's mad. Okay. It's cool. yeah, dad's going to get me for that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hiding. come here. Tyson's dad, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he still beat me up. <laughs> what, what, do, what do you reckon? I, I've seen, I've seen you banged up heaps of times. I've seen, I've seen, as because I'm a massive fan as well. What, what do you reckon is your biggest? I remember one. You had this fucking this slash on your forehead. Oh, it looked you. like it. <laughs> what, what, what do you reckon your your worst injuries and uh, like hardest fight? Yeah, right? hardest fight. Like in that wise, like yeah. Just uh, probably through. when I fought Toby a couple of years ago, he broke my eye socket in two places from my elbow. Um, I was yeah, on the ropes and he stepped forward. Yeah, well. my eye socket just cr- it felt like someone stuck a hot chisel through my face. And just the, as the referee's counting, I'm just looking up and going, "Oh, mate, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Yeah, Take yeah. it." And then, um, yeah, I had two broken orbitals. So that sucked. And then another fight, I had. Uh, so I fought this gentleman. I'd been in Thailand for two and a half years. And this is, I got the opportunity to fight on Fox Sports. Thought, oh, I want to come back to Australia and I want to show the Australian audience what I've been learning overseas in Thailand. And I fought this big uh, English guy. And round one, he cut me. Round two, he cut me again. Round three, he cut me a big one under the eye and the referee was going to stop it. And I, I quickly put my head under the ropes and told the promoter, mate, don't stop it, don't stop it. Whatever you do, I've worked too hard for this, don't stop it. Yeah, yeah, he, told, yeah. he gave the wink to the doctor, hey, maybe don't, <laughs> maybe don't stop it yet. <laughs> so then... Um, <laughs> round four, another cut. Round five, uh, I got hit with one in the center of the, in my eyebrows, and then um, blood started spurting in front of me. Thinking, oh, <laughs> yeah. And then the referee looked at me straight away and goes, "Oh, mate, we're done. No. We're done this time. I'm, no, no." So five rounds, five cuts. So the, doc- the doctors put some butterfly um, tape on me to keep me together. He said, "I can't stitch you to the end of the show. I have to sit ringside, but um, hang around." So I watched all the fights, and then the end of the show he finishes. We go to the back room. He lay down. I said, and he goes, um, as he's putting the, getting the local ready and everything ready, I said, oh, what time is it by any chance? He goes, oh, it's midnight. I said, oh, it's my birthday. I just turned 22. Holy. He goes, oh, beautiful, pick a cut. <laughs> so for, 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 the, for the first two hours of my 22nd birthday, I was getting, I got 54 stitches. In so the face? In the face for, yeah, for so five, five, five cuts. Holy, that's a... Yeah, that's a, that was... But a, it, used to, it used to be um, pretty... Like uh, with it, in any country, like with the refs, like how you said you gave him the wink. Remember when Jamie Ford uh, and his arm popped out? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then Dad pulled, like they we're gonna stop the fight, and Dad popped his arm back in, and then goes, "Keep going." The guy's like, "No, his arm popped yeah. out. He stopped. Tell me, still going now?" <laughs> but, uh, I think there was a lot of a few dodgy ones like that going around. Mm. But um, no, the days. Yeah. So, so <laughs> now going. with my stitches, I tell the doctors, I said, "Oh, if you can, I need um, sets of five. So whether it be five, ten, fifteen, or twenty stitches." Because uh, I want to keep a tally, so if you give me, a, <laughs> if you give me, a, if you give me a seven what or a three, to? it's gonna uh, three hundred and thirty. Three hundred and thirty. Yeah. Just from fighting. Just from fighting. Yeah. So all of my face I, hairline. I, I saw that picture. Yeah. Have you seen the picture? The the Joe Rogan. Yeah, the yeah. picture of Joe Rogan where it shows like, all these cuts. So I got the guys That's in the crazy. magazine. I said, "Oh, can you do a hypothetical of what I would look like if I had all the stitches at once?" So yeah. So. Well, they, what's the hardest spot to? To heal, uh, I've you had reckon? a couple in my in my eyelids. So when they pull the string, your in eyelid, the eyelid, your, your eyelid sort of goes bloop bloop bloop, and in the lip as well, you feel like a fish bloop 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 as they pull the string. Yeah, that's making me not want to fight anymore. <laughs> yeah. Did, did you see my ones after Paul Craig? When I stepped away, <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I stepped away, and as I went to push, I was like, I'm clear, and he just went like, think, and I went took a breath at the same time, and I went, dang, oh. all the way underneath, all the way around my tongue from my teeth, <laughs> had to get stitches in there, and the doctor did them all. Went out, spoke for like probably five minutes and they all fell out. So I had to get them redone oh, straight away. In I've the tongue. To, I've got to keep myself beautiful. Ooh, so I'm not, I'm not trying to Bro, get it looks like you've had a few times. stitches already. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, do you, um, so do you, do you ride? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Have you got a bike? Uh, I bought my uh, V-Road Muscle from here oh, in 2016. It. So Massive uh, shout out to Gaston yeah, yeah, Alley so, for so having Gaston us. Alley, they're very um, awesome. They've been sponsoring my CMT show for the last couple of years. Well, since day one, pretty much. 
Um, they've been our main, main sponsor. And every time we have a weigh-in, we have a weigh-in a weigh -in right here. Um, and then, yeah, they've been amazing. Every time we do a show, they, they can't wait to get on board. It's really cool. That's they, right. they love the fighting. I'm actually a bit devastated. I heard the V-Rods, the, yeah. they don't sell them anymore. So I bought the, the very last one. I bought I bought the bike, and then a month later, um, Harley Davidson announced that no more no more V-Rods now. There are too many emissions or something. They don't pass the American standard for... So, well, I heard a lot of Americans don't like them because they're like they like, like a sports bike yeah, or something. Yeah. They don't, don't really it's, see them as a Harley, but I love them. Like uh, a, yeah, as Aussies, I think we all we all do them. Yeah. them around the corners and everything else. And I'm with the Americans. Yeah, you don't like the, so, they like the very I like the, bro, I, I the, like the fat boys. That and Ducati. I like the, yeah. Oh, that Duke's good. That's We're, very I'm, good. I'm riding. Um, shout out to Two Corp. They're riding a Ducati XD <coughs> Arval, and it, but it's got hangers and they've moved the controls yeah. forward. It flies like you have to push it down because it starts lifting straight away. Mm. So I've had to sort so, of pull up. Um, and we have an open day at Willowbank here in Queensland, um, the quarter mile. So the gasoline alley, they, they hire their track for the, for the whole day and then um, they invite us down. And uh, the day that I went, ended up doing 10 runs on my V rod. And the best time I got was uh, 12.1 seconds, at, uh, 176 down the quarter. <laughs> Yeah, so that that was be the fun. best, best When's day that? ever. Every year, or oh, no, we'll probably. We'll, how, many, the next how, one? how many Willow Banks do you think we're going to do? Make it a regular thing? Every, every few months? Two or three a year. Such a fun day. So, when's the next one? 24th of Feb. There you go. 24th of Feb at Willow Bank. Willow Bank, Willow Bank Raceway. Get so down there. You get, you get a little number on the side of your bike, and then the computer sees how it sees you from the takeoff. It, it does your reaction time from the yellow light to the green light, how far you go up the quarter, and then when you get to the top, um, your, your top speed, your so how many anyone, seconds. Just yeah, anyone with yeah, a bike can go anyone there. Anyone with a bike. Anyone it's with like, a bike in Queensland, make sure you get down there. Yeah. Get amongst it. Um, minute. <laughs> Death wobbles. Death wobbles. Bulls. I'm the posty bike. Thirty yeah. seconds. Yeah. I'll be there with me L's bike. Yeah. I, Too I fat. The bike doesn't oh, move. Yeah, yeah. You still don't have your. <clears throat> nah, I got a black fella license. That's <laughs> you know. When I see them lights, I ain't stop. What? what? <laughs> Take a minute. Take a minute. Oh my god. I'm stopping. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, so, um, my question to you guys, how excited are you for Perth? Massive. It's going to be huge. It's going to be so good for Australia. Just for Perth in general. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. To have the uh, cage over it's there, massive UFC. for Australia. Yeah. I reckon. Like, Obviously devastated that Rob yeah. has had to pull out. So, um, we're that, on that, we're, yeah, we're no lucky. One, no one's so, released. Well, so that's I spoke to him. And uh, uh, you come back on the 27th? Or the 28th? 24th. We'll figure out the logistics later. But um, he said he'll come on the podcast and give a... Give a talk out, so you had it here. We're first. taking over. So, <laughs> he's, gonna, he's gonna let us know, but um, we're taking it, over for for well, I don't know how I don't want to speak on Ty's behalf, but for me, it's massive because like Mark, Ty, and myself, that's yes. a massive deal in myself. Yeah, I understand. And if Rob was on there as well, it would have exactly. been the ultimate card, but uh, but I understand for like a, a fan's perspective, like that it's not the card that they wanted. Like, there's, oh, uh, no, there's a lot of me. complaints out going out, yeah. As, so, as an Aussie, I can't wait yeah. to get over there. Why? I'm why? very lucky why? To why? They, why? they're going off, but uh, because they wanted the Rob card, but I. We're the next in line. We're the, we're I'm the, coming for it. We're coming. <laughs> yeah. that? Well, but, we don't uh, want to see us, eh? Hey? Yeah, for sure. Um, As an Aussie, you want to cheer the boys exactly. too. Exactly. And then it's in your hometown. So why wouldn't you cheer? Or wouldn't you go and support? I don't know. Well, that's why. Uh, but yeah, to, I, I'm, to I'm pumped. Out. Like I said, I, I was gutted about Sydney that, you know, I didn't have Mark. There wasn't no Tyson. But then, uh, obviously, some, you know, things happen for a reason. And now we get to give it a run this time. So when they did the, the Smashers final, um, UFC were going to do an open day for their for their cameras and everything else, and uh, the gym that they were going to go to was was they they decided that they weren't going to do it. So they they rang me and said, "Hey, can we do the open day at your gym tomorrow?" So oh shit, uh, sure for sure, hundred percent. So Rob came down. This is the first time meeting Rob, oh, and then met all the boys, and then uh, met Hector, and then uh, uh, I ended up getting a couple of tickets to to go and support. So I met Rob, 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 Rob won the the Ultimate Fighter. And then a couple of years later, I got the opportunity to go to Montreal and go train with George. I saw that. And then um, Rob was there training. He, he was he was living in the dorm. He was he was training with George all the time. With George Saint Pierre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, so, so they've trained together. Yeah, they've trained together. He was living in, he was living at TriStar. He was living is in that, the dorm. Is that kind of why you reckon old Bud wouldn't fight him? I don't know. I think maybe he bit, knows. Um, yeah, you'd think that being the the student versus the teacher, like George wouldn't been. Um, 
intimidated, but I guess the whole weight thing might have been an issue too yeah, with yeah, his yeah. cardio. Yep. Um, it would have been interesting. I was so looking forward to that fight. So but, was I. And, but at the same time, I was looking forward to the Rob fight Luke too because we had Luke um, pop into Bunshu, uh, my gym, um, last year. He was here for the... Uh, oh, Mad Hueys. He was doing uh, some video shoots yeah, with Mad Hueys. Yeah, because his friends were Mick Fanning. We were just talking yeah, about this yeah. off, and off then, before. Um, so he, he gave me a, a message. Hey, I'm in the straight. Am I if I pump it into the gym tomorrow? So like, holy shit. Um, yeah, no worries. And then he ended up being like the coolest guy. Yeah. And then when I heard he was fighting Rob, it's like, oh, this puts me in a tough spot because I've met Rob now. I've met Luke. Now. Yeah. I'm, I've, they're both my friends. Yeah. So, um, that's the fight business. Yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah exactly. every, everyone, everyone knows it's it. Like, well, right? that's why it was um, Rosie. Like, it was just random like, that she asked. But she asked, would you fight Mark? Never. So, like, but like Ray Seffel and them, they were boys. And yeah, that's but they're like, the same age. Yeah. That's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I was, I was <laughs> actually, thinking they about... Actually, they, they actually weren't boys. Oh, really? No, oh. Mark. Mark had a street fight with uh, Ray's brother on the street. Oh, yeah. oh, really? And I think he, um, yeah. So it, that that went on from just like street stuff, and oh, then right. once he got the opportunity to fight him, they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. yeah. So I don't, I don't know if they yeah. were. Uh, they're Samoans, yes. Yeah. But I don't know if they were boys. boys. Yeah. So yeah, very that's different. a different thing. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. me, it's, but that's like, <coughs> I actually always get that question. Yeah. Would you fight Mark? Would you fight yeah. Mark? That's like. No, I wouldn't. Yeah. That's just like... Yeah. That doesn't come down to being scared or anything like that. No, it's gym, never like that. It's well. just your where... Gym, your gym buddies. It's where, a different where, yeah, thing. yeah. He took... You know, he took me in and he... Yeah. and he. It's like, you know... It's like fighting a sensei ropes. or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> don't ever... <laughs> don't ever call Mark a sensei. <laughs> go, go. I don't know. Sensei, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But, but no, I would never... Yeah. I would never... It, I think it's just... No, you, you don't wouldn't. fight your gym mates anyway. Yeah, you, you wouldn't never, fight, you, would, you know. You if, he's, one of my, he's actually one of it's my like, close um, boys. GSP and Roy McDonald, they were gym mates forever. And, oh, when are you going to fight each other? So, mate, we train each other yeah. every yeah, day. Yeah, what yeah, are yeah. I fighting for? He's my buddy. I go yeah. to his house. We have dinner all the time. Don't get me wrong. If the they said, oh, he's 10 million each, Ooh, we're fuck, we're right. fighting. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, well, the, but then much. again, what's the fight going to be like? It's just like a sparring session. Yeah. And well, that's pretty much get what Mark's getting paid anyway. So they can just pay you. You know, that's there's... With with Mark and Ray as well, it's one of those things where is um, who's the top dog as well. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I fought um, Chopper three times, and yeah. he was the man in New Zealand. I was the man in Australia. So yeah. okay, we're, we're buddies, but I want to prove I'm the best, and you want to prove you're the best. Yeah, of course. So um, more so, we're associates. We're not, we weren't really friends, but we're associates. But at the same time, I, I want to be the man. As yeah, much yeah, as, yeah. Of but course. But it's different if you're gym but that's buddies. A, that's though. what I'm saying. They're like from the same era and yeah. the same age. Yep. Me and Mark, I. I I, I, the first person I watched fighting yeah. was Mark, Mark Hunt and Ray Seffel. So that's like, that's like, yeah, it's a, I think it's a era. bit, it's a bit, yeah. Uh, the new era. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what, bro. Yeah. We do but have yeah, a couple questions. No, is the answer yep. to the question. But, and for Perth, fighting on, I know obviously that's the biggest thing for you, fighting with Mark. And yourself. Yeah, well, you didn't say yeah. that last time, so... <laughs> <laughs> what a watching guy all the time. Yeah. You weren't on the card. I was talking about when we were on the podcast the last show. You are like, oh, and... <laughs> Would you fight Tyson? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, I've all got right, some where's questions. Where's these questions? I've got some for you. Are these from... Some of them are from Rosie, actually. They were pretty good questions. Is in your wife, Rosie? Yes. Rosie, okay. yeah, she's coming. If you weren't, uh, if you weren't a fighter, what other line would you be doing? What if, I if you weren't, weren't, weren't a fighter? What, what other line of work do you see yourself in? Oh, do you, <laughs> you get paid for telling really bad jokes, <laughs> <laughs> right? You, you'd be up there. You'd be getting paid a lot. <laughs> I've seen some of those he, he is, he is a like, he is a gym, he is a gym comedian. That's for sure, that's for sure. Uh, loves the joke. If I get paid for my memes on the uh, Instagram. I'd be, I'd be a millionaire. Well. <laughs> we're actually speaking with Fortify this weekend, so maybe we can let you know how to do it. <laughs> um, yeah, you do love Instagram and stuff. You do yeah, love your social cool. media. It's good. Eh? It's good. Is, well, what are you doing with the semen brand? Are you actually going to get it out there? I, I've had, I hit a snag. I, um, with a, Once I started the brand, I couldn't keep up with the supply. I could only, I could only supply enough for one person a day. <laughs> So I'm thinking about taking the brand to China, make it, making it a Chinese line, yeah. Chinese brand. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I can't quite guarantee the quality, though. 
yeah. <laughs> on the taste. <laughs> like, might have that scent. <laughs> might be a different. Man, uh, have you been to China a few times? Uh, a couple of times, yeah. Uh, uh, that was like a crazy, like culture shock for me as well because I um obviously being naive but I went to Japan and like I love Japan like yes. the martial arts side everything that was like one of my favourite places to go so I've been to Chinatown in yeah, Sydney well, that's that's a, I went to China th expecting the same thing probably like that's probably a little bit but uh, yeah I went to China and it was complete opposite oh yeah so um, just the yeah the whole culture everything it just shocked me so yeah well, I fought in I think Guangdong and then um, as we're driving to the Guangdong. stadium so <laughs> <laughs> They're saying this, this town's only for microwaves. They only make mi microwaves in this whole province. And then the next Holy. next town over, they only make fridges. So every single factory you see is just that's just fridges. And then the one over there, that's only TVs. It's like far out. That's how so it works. That's you how it works. They work 12, 14 hour days, and then they're on that production line where they might put in three screws, move it along three screws, and that's that's your that, the whole your whole life pretty much. It's Fire. just insane to think that well, every where, single person microwave you see is coming from that that yeah. you hear this, all this area. What was it? The thing you wanted to go to that festival. Can, ah, the Canton Canton, Canton, Canton festival. festival. That's where. So, um, is that where that small thing they got that yeah, from as well? I think hey, so. they just think you it's go. Like, it's time. where it's where like all businesses go and they, and they these people manufacture stuff, and you can you can like just buy it, and, but then it's up to you to how you how you market it and bring it oh, into yeah. the scene, I suppose. So, yeah, I want to head over there one day. Yep. Business. Probably find like a dildo or like... I seen, um, <laughs> I went to the, the open market. So it's like Thailand and you've just gone through and it's got a big, big roof and then you're walking through. And um, for the first time I seen them chopping up like dogs. Like if with my own eyes, it's like, whoa. Did you eat it? Oh, I got done. Uh, nah, I got done. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't eat it, but um, I'd have they, had, they, they had like cats, dogs. Um, they were picking um, live chickens out of cages. You get to pick the chicken. I watched a Chinese guy pick the chicken, they quickly chop its head off, put it in the hot water, give it a quick rinse, quickly pluck it, and they put it in a plastic bag, from cage to a plastic bag with, within three minutes, right that's, in front of you. That's egg fresh. The, and that's then, that's um, fresh. It was the Muslim markets we went to in Jian, we got done. It was like they had all these got like... Done. <laughs> because there was all kebabs, and you buy the kebab, and then when you walk around the corner, they got the skeleton of the dog Ooh, just shit. hanging from the thing. You can taste it I think away. it's yeah. mental. I think people just Probably. think and oh, they're thinking about their pet and that, and that's why they don't want to eat it. Oh uh, yeah, it's different. It's, it but, is. But crazy it's what you brought up with too. If you're, if it's just every day, like yeah, a cow, like a normal. chicken, like a dog, it's just yeah. like normal. But we see your dogs, but if you brought it up to eat it, it's what you eat. So, what, yeah. what what dog do you reckon be the nicest? Oh, Pumba, I, bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I reckon Pumba would taste like <laughs> Pumba. Pumba. Yeah, you got some fat on her too. I, re I reckon in Australia, if they weren't so endangered, koala would be nice. A very, very oh, wow. eucalyptus -y. Chlamydia. Had, <laughs> <laughs> they do. They got chlamydia too. Let's say you had a cold, a little bit of koala meat to help open the airways. Yeah, yeah. E eucalyptus would be good for you. How would you so, cook it? Slow cook it on the so, bar. Right, imagine a like little koala ribs, leg. Bro. I love my ribs. <laughs> Get two koala drumsticks. Just sit there and nibble. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting done by Peter. Straight away. We're getting it done. Shut it down. They're going to be cooking koalas. Um, all right. Next, uh, we got if you if you were to have dinner with five inspirational people, who would they be and why? I Dead or alive? One. Dead or alive? Jeez. Uh, Bruce Lee, Van nice. Dam. Nice. Ah, uh, jeez. Oh, uh, probably Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's yep. pretty in inspirational. Probably. Stallone, and maybe maybe someone spiritual. Uh, Jesus, uh, the Dalai Lama. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. Yeah, why not? Why not? He did it. He No, that that was some good. Just, okay, you just go. So, um, yeah, get some insight on how to be Man. a better person. Because yeah. fighting wise, it'd be like great to talk to those other guys. But at the same time, after fighting, I want to be I want to be the better person I, tomorrow than I was today. Yeah. So sorry, can yeah. be. That's cool. Ty. Five. Me. Yep. Rihanna. <laughs> Adriana Lima. We've got other. Rita Ora. Bradley's watching this. Oh, one. yeah, I'm getting in trouble. Done, no, no. Done. Yeah, go, Rita Ora. Who else? Yeah, they'd probably just be five girls, probably, but I don't want to say the rest. Yeah. But, nah, like, the inspiration or not? Uh, that. Uh, <laughs> Dolly Parton. Yeah, <laughs> Dolly Parton. <laughs> nah, I don't know. I would. Yeah, nah. Like proper, proper. All right, proper. For real, real life. For real. 
I actually met uh, Clinton Pryor. He's one guy I'd like to have dinner with. He's, they call him the spiritual walker. He walked uh, across Australia. He was someone good uh, I'd like to talk with. Um, who else? 50 Cent. Ooh, I nice. like his hustle. He's a gangster too. 50 Cent. What about Mundine? Uh, I'd, probably, I'd have dinner with him in Sydney, but I probably wouldn't be like five, <laughs> top five. Well, I, went, I went to the fight. I just went and watched the fights. The other, um, Matt Ross, thanks for sending out the status in there. Um, but uh, yeah, I was, I was surprised he got that. He caught him, left hook, straight on the chin. Knocked him out yeah. too. Um, I, I didn't know because I didn't um, know Brown. I haven't been following the boxing, but um, uh, he went up two weight divisions, I think, oh, to fight yeah. Mundine. So. Yeah, yeah. I, on the record, I was watching him on TV, and he had uh, 45 fights, but only like three or four knockouts too. So yeah, yeah he, we, we we were going to bet on it, and it was like, like he, he was, it was it was yeah. He, I was like, he's never knocked anyone really yeah, out. I don't think so he was. We a, didn't bet he, on it. He, I don't think he was a threat. The first round he looked dangerous because he had a crack, but I think yeah. he, I think he gassed. Yeah, he tried to knock him out in that first one, then yeah. gassed, and then, and then gassed. Monday Nelson him Mandela. Oh, I read a bit of nice. his book. Yep, I, I'd I'd like to have dinner with him. That would be a really good one. But, um, yeah, other than that, I don't really... I just want to eat dinner by myself sometimes. <laughs> <you know? laughs> you just want to eat. Or you can eat. No. Do you have five? Yeah, who's, um, who's your five, big five person? Uh, the Rock. Ooh, nice. Good choice. I want to get in there with The Rock. Um, I forgot the, to say uh, The Rock. Uh, Obama. Um, <laughs> you don't know Obama. I don't know him. I want to. I want to sit in there. That's the whole point of the thing. Well, uh, no, Hillary. Hillary. Um, Elon Hillary Musk. Clinton. Elon Musk. I don't know if you know Elon Who's Musk. That? He does um, Tesla. Um, like he 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 built Tesla and um, he's making those rockets that can land again and stuff like that. He's what's old bud name? He does Virgin. What's his name? Richard Branson. Yeah, he'd Richard. be another good one. Oh, actually, Connor. Um, Connor McGregor. Oh, yeah. Smart, yeah, smart. I reckon we'd get along. Um, yeah, I actually I actually want to... Uh, the goal is to get um, The Rock on here. That's the end goal. Ooh, goal. Nice. End goal. We'll get. <laughs> <laughs> it will, he'll be here. He'll be here. We'll make, we're going to make it happen. And you started help. Got, yeah. got it here first. And then bang, the rock will be. So the Hulk, so the Hulk. <laughs> oh, you want to oh, the Hulk's Usos with the rock, bro? I swear, yeah, they're, I swear. They're like, they're like. Well, I what? don't know if they're like Cowies, but so it goes on like that. Yeah. They do Twitter. They do Twitter. Uh, oh yeah. Shout outs and that. But that's um, why, like, so we made up. Uh, we're lucky today. We made um the trip to Queensland because we're able to get you today. Uh, tomorrow we've got Big Andrew for feeder and um. Conor Carrell. <laughs> <laughs> Conor Carrell. Uh, and then uh, in the afternoon we got uh, Fortify. So we're getting the wrap up from the cameramen because I think uh, they only brought uh, two SIM card, uh, two memory cards. So uh, there's uh, I think someone might be getting fired after this episode. <laughs> we, we, we were in the late. hiding. <laughs> we, met, we, we made John wait. We made the owner of Gasoline Alley. So uh, yeah. Thank you very much for uh, coming anyone on. Anyone you want uh, yeah, to give a shout out to? to oh, Gaston Alley for giving this opportunity to use the premises today. Uh, Monster Energy for looking after me for the last two years. Uh, uh, Triumph United for the boxing gear they've been looking after me with. Um, uh, Bellator, Scott Coker, thank you so much for giving me this old guy an opportunity to fight on your shows and represent us the well, Australia because, yeah, without you... I wouldn't be able to pay my bills. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, just the boys, thanks, thanks so much for uh, the opportunity to come on the show. It's cool. Appreciate it. Thanks Thank for you. taking the time Thank out. you. I appreciate um, it. Oh, and we're uh, Altec and uh, Dre Beats for sending out some stuff. Drizzy. We started in the shed, now we're here. <laughs> bro, bro, it's hard. Oh, on yeah. that, bro. Okay, can, uh, whoever sent in the question that Ty read out in the last episode, I've been trying to ask Ty to find it out. He, um... About I don't know how to use my phone. Probably. <laughs> about Mark being a vegetarian. Whoever sent that question in, please contact us or message us on our page. Um, you won the shed, but we haven't been able to find the. You're gonna get thing thirty. To you're gonna get thirty line. Yeah. <laughs> it was me who sent it. Was the me. I was the one who said it. Yeah, send me the shed. <laughs> send me the shed now. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Um, and quick muscle bros, uh, Reebok, uh, Shogun Martial Arts, uh, um, Draper Beats, Altec. Southlands Estate Agents, Fresh Ink, 
Fresh Ink. That's where we'll be recording here tomorrow. In Gold Coast. Ooh, They've been helping yeah, us that's out. That's where I got my last piece from too. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah, 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 that's where we're at. Oh, For we're the best hats and, and fades on the Gold Coast. And Go God, check it out. God Lab, Elevate Health. This fella's got like hundreds. This is because we're started now. Now it's the podcast yeah. and our own sponsors. Mm. I mean, it's, it's bringing up. Shout out to everyone. Western Sydney. Shout out to all the sponsors. <laughs> And all, right. uh, all the best for your fight. Thank uh, you I'll much. be there, so I want to come oh, and cheers on. So it's going to be mad. Are you coming out with Monster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad. Yeah. That's uh, even better. Bam Bam's having an after party uh, too. Chris Weidman too. He's going to come down to Australia oh, cool. as well. So I'll be you with him. You know what time it is. Uh, oh. so I thought it was Cowboy, but... um. Yeah, they told me Chris. So no, apparently... So, oh, cool. All right. Thank you very much, John. Gentlemen. Appreciate it. And that's a wrap. You. Woo! Yo, sauce. Went up. Yeah.